Yeah, I'm here with uh, Mary Barra, Trish, and it's exciting for me to talk to her. It's got to be exciting for her to show so many cars. You guys basically own the show. Uh, you've got the new uh, Corvette Stingray convertible. You've got the new refresh of the Camaro. You've got the new CTS out. You've got the new SS, which hardcore car enthusiasts uh, have been waiting for for so long. Um, and you've got the new Buicks, right? So you've got so much new product here. Right. It is. It's really exciting. And I think it shows what we're taking every single brand in the portfolio. When you look at the importance of uh, the Lacrosse and the Regal, the CTS and what that's going to take do for Cadillac. I mean, building on the ATS and, and really just demonstrating American luxury and what Cadillac is meant to be. And then the performance suite from a, a Chevrolet perspective. It's, it's really exciting. Why is uh, GM so focused on sports car performance? I mean, you've got more high performance sports car models um, definitely than your American competitors and maybe more than some of your European competitors. Well, I think, you know, when you look across the portfolio, we have a lot of vehicles, very important vehicles, and a performance vehicle often is very important from a halo perspective of demonstrating the capability. When you look at Chevrolet, and we had the most wins on the track last year, and a lot of learnings come from, from racing into performance and then flow through the whole portfolio. The importance of fuel economy, performance, I mean, just because people want to have more fuel-efficient cars doesn't mean they want to give up on performance. So I think the learnings permeates through the whole portfolio. Which one are you most excited about? Which one do you want to take home at the end of the day? Well, you know, I, I'm, I'm a diehard Camaro fan, but I have to tell you the new Corvette I absolutely love. I've been, as we've revealed the cars today, my son's been texting me and he, he indicates he's, and he's going to be a 16 year old in two, uh, two weeks. So you better he get him both. one. I don't think so, but, <laughs> um, but no, I, it, for me, it's truly a toss up now between the Camaro and the Corvette. I just, I love them both. So I love the CTSV. Uh, it was, really an eye-opening experience to drive that car. I had it for a week last summer. Um, what can you do to make it better? Because it's already, at least from an auto, auto critic's perspective, one of the greatest cars out there. Well, you know, when you start with the, the new CTS and you look at the fact that we made it lighter and it's bigger uh, and you look at all the technology we put throughout that vehicle to, to balance it from a performance perspective, I mean, every single aspect of it from, from a driving ability, I, I think we've advanced the styling of the vehicle to take Cadillac to the next level and the interior is just beautiful. And so it's got the core for that performance that people are used to. So you're in charge of global product development. Obviously, Asia Pacific and China has become so important. Uh, to all of the car makers. How do you uh, differentiate the product that you're making for the U.S. and the product that you're making for them? Well, in any um, country in which we compete, it's important to understand that local customer. What are the driving conditions they may face? What are the, you know, the, the way that they drive and then the features and the functions they look for? They do vary across the globe. And, you know, the, the strength that we have in General Motors is we have people that are local living in those markets that understand them. And it's all part of the requirements process we use when we kick off a vehicle. We call it front loading. We make sure we capture all that when we start a new vehicle and then make sure we execute it as we uh, deliver it into the marketplace. What do you think, by the way, about the uh, currency fluctuations that we've seen? I mean, how much does that affect you as a U.S. automaker that's trying to compete with um, Japanese automakers whose product is all of a sudden much cheaper? Well, I mean, you know, in my role in global product development, I'm focused on having the, the best product for the right value. Um, and, and I think it's one of the reasons we look at the uh, build where you sell as an overlying principle. Um, probably Dan Ammon is a better person to talk to in detail about that. But I mean, we look at driving the value in the vehicle uh, across the board. And that's what we have to stay focused on because, you know, a vehicle development process is, is, you know, three to four years depending on where you uh, snap the start line. So you, that's what we've got to stay focused on and that's what I keep my team focused on. All right, so I'm a Tahoe owner and driver. So I on. love the big giant trucks. Mm -hmm. uh, Escalade obviously has was, was really the big uh, segment sort of opener for, for Cadillac. Absolutely. Uh, when are we gonna see new big trucks? Uh, when, because that, that refresh has been a while, right? We haven't seen a new uh, truck there since 2007, 2008. I, I'm gonna have to tell you, stay tuned for that. You're not going to give me any. You can break news here. It's not a problem. No, I, I, I can't. <laughs> All right, let me uh, ask you then sort of a, a, a totally different kind of question. Mm -hmm. We just had a, a woman for the first time named as the head of the Secret Service, and I, obviously you're judged against a the same benchmark as anybody else. But I think it's interesting for people um, to get your perspective on what it's like to be a woman in the traditionally male-dominated auto industry. 
Well, I've worked at General Motors for 33 years. I've worked with a, a ton of wonderful people, and I felt through my career at General Motors, I've always, always have been, to your point, evaluated on what I contributed and you know what results uh, that I was able to obtain in the organization. But we're, you know, we work and we come together as a team. I mean, put a, putting a car, truck, or crossover on the road is a team sport, and um, I just view myself as part of the team. If by being a woman, I could encourage young women who like math and science to not shy away from it and to pursue technical careers, uh, I love doing that. But uh, you know, at General Motors, you know, I'm, I think I've got the best job on the field there to be able to work on product all day long. But you know, really, it's a great team. I can imagine also that um, all of those guys need. Uh a woman in the, at least one woman in the room to say you know what there's a lot of female car buyers out there as well well but we have talented women across all of General Motors you know from uh, you know responsible for sales in, in Chevrolet manufacturing labor uh, uh, chief tax and so almost every function there's a woman in a senior role so it's not you know we're not looking for one woman in the room there's several women in the room and we have in the engineering organization in the design organization we have women throughout as well I mean look at Helen Emsley who was very uh, Responsible for um, the work, a lot of the work done on the Camaro and the uh, the Corvette, so as well as the trucks. So um, you know, I, I don't think it's looking for the one woman in the room at General Motors. There's several.